Greetings and welcome back to 50 Shades of Beige. As you all might have noticed, my set's looking a little bit different tonight. That's because I'm in the middle of breaking it down, but I got a surprise delivery today, and I think this specimen is of particular interest to you gaming enthusiasts out there. So I just wanted to do a quick unboxing and take it from there. Let's get right into it. All right, so we've got our package here. This came from WCZ store. Not really familiar with them. Now, this purports itself to be brand new. Let's see what we got here. I'm sorry, not WCZ. This is from Wasno. Trusted, reliable, renewed. This is supposedly an RTX 2060. You can see here we've got our label Shenzhen Veneta Technology Company Limited. So that's legit. Normally uh, they just make up these brand names and slap whatever they want on there. But uh, this looks like a legitimate company, at least from the outside looking in. The box is sealed. It actually says it's a 2060 Super, which I think is fantastic. Let's go ahead and crack the box open. One thing I did notice, what it's missing is an NVIDIA logo. You can kind of see here. Let's take a quick peek at the back. It says DirectX 12. Gee, I sure hope so. GeForce Pure HD technology. Interesting. Spectacular video. Magic panel exclusively developed by Galaxy Microsystems Limited. Panel is an innovative software for computer enthusiast users to manipulate. Users could manipulate thing like BIOS recovery, fan speed, and overclock settings. Interesting. We got a Windows 10 GPU support. Oh, gee, this is looking a little uh, more shady by the minute. But let's keep going through. Direct compute. These are all basically old <laughs> features. Uh, it says Veneta. Graphics processing has become an essential ingredient to the modern PC. Nowadays, we simply demand more from our PCs to deliver outrageous, I'm sorry, to deliver gorgeous graphics, fantastic video, crisp responsive photo editing, and a premium window, window, not windows, window 10 experience. The graphics card brings impressive graphics processing power to your PC at an affordable price. Unfortunately, our box looks like it got a little bit smashed, so hopefully our GPU is in good shape. For those of you playing at home, we are working with part number, oh, RTX 2060 Super 8G. Okay. Now what piqued my interest about this particular graphics card was the price and the fact that it's brand new. I, you're gonna have a hard time finding true hardware supported ray tracing for less than $160. And that's exactly what this was. There we go, finally got it up. All right, let's go ahead and pull this thing out real quick here. We've got no manual, no driver CD, nothing, just a plain old regular old box, which is fine. As I said earlier, I'd imagine Veneta or whoever makes these or packages these up for them, um, probably just use the same box for everything and more power to them. They're trying to save a buck. If this card is what it purports to be, their margins have to be pretty slim. Let's go ahead and pull the card out and see how it looks. All right, interesting. Actually very un uninteresting, but we'll continue looking at it here. So I can tell just by looking at this heat sink that it's pretty basic. They've got all the important contact points. There is, uh, you know, there is cooling for the memory. Obviously we've got a nice cold plate for the GPU. Two absolutely chungus heat pipes right here. Got our eight pin connector right there for, for auxiliary power. Two basic fans, a pretty basic universal looking uh, GPU shroud. And then we have this back plate, which is unfortunately plastic as well. It looks almost like it was 3D printed. You uh, 3D printing enthusiasts can leave a comment down below and let me know what you think, but it looks 3D, it looks and feels 3D printed to me. All right, and that's all she wrote for this one. So let's go ahead and get this GPU mounted up on the bench and see how she performs. And then we'll tear it down real quick and see what's inside. All right, here we go. We've got our RTX 2060 Super mounted up on the test bench. For those of you who are new here, 
The current test bench is an Intel i9-12900K on a Gigabyte Aorus Z690 Elite AX motherboard with 32 gigabytes of DDR5-6000, all cooled off by a Thermalright Frozen Nate ARGB 360mm AIO and my trusty Corsair AX1200i power supply. All right, let's go ahead and get things started. This will be the first power on, power on test of the Venita RTX 2060 Super. All right, so far so good. Let's see if we get video out. There we go. All right, here we go. You'll have to bear with me with this janky setup here. I'm kind of working with what I got. Um, anyway, we went ahead and installed the GPU. We got the drivers that were released on October 31st installed. Those are the latest ones. Let's pull up GPU Z here see what we're working with. According to GPU-Z, we're working with an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 Super, Revision A1, the TU-106 die, that's the correct die, that's the correct technology, the correct die size, everything looks good. And our NVIDIA driver is installed without a hitch, so that tells me that this is probably a legit 2060 Super. Let's go ahead and hit look up and see what we get here. And no surprise to me at all, it comes up with this Max Sun or Pallet uh, 2060 Super. Maybe Pallet or Max Sun never got around to building these cards or they sold them off at a discount just to get rid of them. All right, and here we go with Time Spy running at 1080p. That's why the screen looks a little funny there. I tried it in 1440p and the 2060 Super just couldn't hack it. I figured it wasn't worth it. If you guys want me to benchmark other stuff, other games and things, let me know. Let's see what we're working with here. Staying in that 50 frame, 48 frame range, not too bad. All right, here we go with graphics test two. The first one went pretty well. We were about 55, 60 frames per second. Oh, here we go. Now we're dipping down a little bit. This is when they tend to struggle a little bit. Yeah, 35. Still hanging above 30 FPS though, which is, you know, for a $150 brand new GPU, I'd say that's not too shabby. All right, survey says 9405. So not great, not amazing. I can't imagine there are many people out there that are running a 12900K with an RTX 2060 Super. Graphics test one, we averaged about 55 frames per second. For graphics test two, we averaged 50 frames per second. There were no major dips or issues. The graphics card seems to run fine. It's quiet enough. And let's see what that nets us versus the rest of the world. Better than 51% of all results. All right, and now for my favorite part, the teardown. This looks like a pretty simple construction. So we're just gonna make this a quick teardown and make sure that there isn't anything egregious going on in here. All right, and there's our four heat sink screws. That's for the cold plate there. And this is far from a tutorial, but just some tips if you are gonna take your graphics card apart. Some things I like to do is I like to lay out a little diagram, just because some screws can, be, can actually be longer than others and things like that, even though that's pretty much not the case with this particular graphics card. I like to lay my screws out one by one in a little diagram based on where they were at on the graphics card. So when I go to put it back together, everything goes back together nice and easy and nothing gets put into the wrong hole. Basically because of my history from repairing mobile devices where if you're working with an iPhone or something like that, there's a really high chance that you're going to have problems if you don't keep track of the screws. I'll actually give Veneta a little bit of credit here on the simplicity of their design. This is about as bog standard as it gets. So once you have these screws on the back out, take a look around, make sure you're not missing anything. And then you can just go ahead and give this a little wobble wobble. Try not to push too hard. Make sure you're not gonna yank any cables out, in fact, we're going to go ahead and pop this fan connector off now, just to be on the safe side. I also don't recommend using tweezers for that, but that's all right. 
so I'll take it in the back. So if I can, oh, nope. There we go. It wasn't so bad. Better safe than sorry with that stuff. Never yank something off. All right. We've got pretty much the most simple heat sink design known to man, and that's just fine. We just got our two heat pipes. Got a lot of surface area here. Two fans, nothing fancy, right? Nothing to write home about. In fact, I've seen this design or something quite similar to it many times throughout the years on budget graphics cards. Um, looks like we do have a date code here of April 19th, 2023. Now, I'm not sure if that's when the heat sink was manufactured or when the card was put together. Your guess is as good as mine. Uh, I would I would imagine that's when they put the card together on. Having a look at the PCB, this is about as basic as it gets, guys. I got I don't really have much to say about this. Um, it's a simple VRM setup. We've got our memory chips here. They did cover them with um, thermal pads, and they do make contact directly with the heat sink, which is fantastic. I've got a feeling that Veneta uses this board layout for multiple GPU dies just because we're missing some uh, power delivery components here, some filtering. Maybe they had another design that used or required a little bit more power. Also, you guys can tell me in the comments, but I haven't seen a 20 series card with a DDI port on it before. So yeah, maybe they're taking this, adapting something from an older layout and just slapping the TU-106 die on there, doing the memory configuration and letting it rip, which is fine. Um, you know, for the price, I really can't knock it. There's no markings on this silicon that make me think that maybe this is used or something like that. And as you can see here, we'll take a closer look. As advertised, it is indeed a TU-106-410A1, which is the die specifically for the 2060 Super. We've got our memory chips under here. I'll go ahead and peel this off just so we can see what we're working with. Boy, those are some chonky heat pads. And as expected and purported in GPU-Z, we are working with uh, Samsung GDDR6 memory. I think really where they're saving money here is this really basic setup with the heatsink, and they're probably using the same board layout, or almost the same board layout, for multiple GPU dies to save a buck or two. I say if you must have an NVIDIA graphics card and it must be brand new and you absolutely cannot spend more than $200, this is a good bet for you, absolutely. I think it's a fine card. I can't see anything wrong with it. It's certainly got its limitations. As I said earlier, I have not seen a Touring GPU, a 2000 series RTX GPU with a with a DVI connector on it before. That's a new one on me, but that's all right. If that's what works. All right, let me know what you think down in the comments. Would you buy this thing for $150? Is there a particular game that you want me to test? Is there a benchmark you want me to run? You want some more information? Just leave me a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer you as quickly as I can. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you soon.